Here we begin our journey, or I should say, we continue our journey to circuits, looking more at stuff, how the ideas of current electricity can be applied. Now, some time ago, one of my students posted this, and I, ha, <laughs> it made my nails. Fascinating, and it's true, because in the previous chapter, we looked at Crookes tube in electric fields, how electrons can, we can control electrons to fly around, which is great to control electricity, but like this person said, well, I'd much rather turn the switch on or off. And I agree. And that is why a lot of people invented circuits, because you want to control electricity is so useful. You get to, you know, have phones and lights and fans, but it's too complicated to use electric fuels and, you know, crook's tube. Why not we just hit a switch to turn on electricity? So yes, we will be learning more uh, about circuits now. Uh, how you can use circuits, wires to control electricity, to make it do what you want it to do, to give you power, okay? So the goal of today's videos, a few on, first you need to know what is potential difference and volt. You may have memorized this from a previous course like IG or SPM, but make sure you really know what it means now. Can you visualize it? Can you explain it in three languages? I don't know, two languages. And you need to know, um, we're going to look at what this thing called EMF and potential difference. You can explain the difference. And of course, lastly, we're going to calculate, do some example questions at the end on voltage drops. If by then you feel like, yeah, miss, I know already, you can skim through that part really quickly. Okay, let's take a look. What, what was going on today? Aha. Uh -huh. Now remember, we looked at current, right, previously. Let me change my pen a little bit. Okay. I'm going to give you an analogy to help think about it. Imagine these trucks are the charges or trucks or cart. La. That's an analogy. Yeah? These are the charges. What's flowing? Positive charge is flowing, but in real life, it's actually electrons. Okay, so the first analogy is every charge is like a cart. And each cart is carrying yellow stuff. You see all this yellow stuff? That's what we call energy. So the energy is carrying energy from the battery source to... Something, let's say, oh, what's this thing? This is a light bulb. It's a symbol for a light bulb. Okay, so this charge are uh, flowing, 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 flowing. You have a certain current measured by the emitter. Flowing, flowing, some more, and then back. Now, notice how all the energy go to the light bulb, right? Then it dump all the energy in, then come out, no energy anymore. I want you to keep this in mind, okay? Also, side note, the current I1 equals to I2 means the current measured here on the right side is the same as the current measured on the left side. Same, right? So think about this. This is a Coulomb train. A whole bunch of charges working very hard to move energy from the battery to a component, light bulb. Then they dump all the battery there because no other component anymore. Eh, anywhere to deliver, no more. Okay, lah, give you all the energy. So light bulb gets all the energy from the battery. But I have one question for you to think about. When we think of this in terms of circuits, all these charges, right, they are moving, they have energy, but where does the energy come from? This is not a trick question. I just think about chapter 6 a bit. Types of energy. What, what, what energy is moving around? What energy is being converted? Where does the energy come from? The answer is, well, hopefully you can see it. You just got to look really carefully. If you just put a bunch of wires on the table, like this, nothing is going to flow because there's no energy. Energy got to come from somewhere. And that somewhere is the battery right here. This is what we call the energy source in circuits. Uh, in uh, house power generator, they are a different story. But we're looking at circuits. So you need energy from batteries. Okay, Maybe you have seen this small... Um, AA battery, this one in your torchlight, everything. Maybe if you will see a lot of these fat ones in labs. Okay, these are the big ones, 1.5 volts. You may see some square ones like these. These are 9 volt batteries. These are commonly in TV remote, guitar pedals, I don't know, some stuff. And of course, your phones and cameras and other electronics, PSP, Sony, PlayStation. All, a lot of them have square, flat batteries like this one. These are much higher, I think. Oh, 3.6 volts. Yeah. So open up your camera. Check out the battery. No battery, no energy. That's the whole story. 
So where the energy come from? There it is. So this energy is what we call electromotive force. Oh, means got force. Okay, when I say electromotive force, right, this force here is just put the two like that there, electromotive force, but it's not exactly a force, okay? Um, you need to know these definitions. Electromotive force can short form to EMF. You see them use EMF a lot. The symbol we use for this is... Uh, the book use E, but there's so many E already. So when I write EMF, I will use the curly E, so something like this. This is my symbol for EMF. The book will use capital E. Um, the unit is volts. So, E volt. So what is EMF? Related to our battery, we mentioned earlier. EMF is basically just energy per unit charge. So energy per unit charge. But you need to specify what kind of energy transform to what. Okay, so energy transform from non-electrical to electrical energy per unit charge. If you're wondering why, where this come from, actually it's not new, you've seen this before. Remember you have seen um, work done equals to Q times change in V. This is from chapter 17 and chapter 6. If you rearrange this to have V, that will be energy, which is work done, over Q. I'll just say change in energy over Q. So that's where it comes from. Change in energy over per unit charge. But you need to specify in uh, masking for EMF, non-electrical to electrical. What does that mean? Well, you see batteries, right? Their, their energy comes from somewhere. Or they have a certain kind of energy. Do you know what kind of energy is stored inside here? Take a guess. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'm not going to go through this. Lah, but basically, non-electrical, for example, is chemical energy. Your battery has chemical energy for a whole bunch of chemistry reasons. I'm not going to explain. Then, when you put this as part of a circuit, all the chemical energy becomes electrical energy. That is EMF. Now, let's look on the right side. So, what's the difference between EMF and potential difference, aka voltage, which means the same thing. Um, this one, they use the symbol V for potential difference. The unit is also V. So, V and V, la, you just make sure you know la, which one is unit, which one symbol. Now, here's the same thing. You have energy per unit charge, which is based on our W equals to QV, uh, work done equals to QV. Work done is change in energy. Uh, v here is potential difference. So you want to define what your change in potential is. That will be change in energy over Q. So energy per charge. Yeah, same idea. But what's the difference between EMF and PD is now we are converting from electrical to non-electrical. For instance, if you have a circuit, you have electrical energy. Then once you go to a light bulb, right, suddenly it becomes light energy. Or it gets hot, so it becomes thermal energy. All kinds of other stuff. So in that sense, electrical becomes something else. Okay, So that's the difference between EMF and PD. One is chemical to electrical. The other one is electrical to something else. Another way to define it, Based on our equation on the right is work done per unit charge, yes. Uh, to move across two points in the circuit, that's basically the same thing here. Uh, but instead, you're doing WD per unit charge. You need work, right? You need, to, you need some energy to move uh, charge from, let's say, from here to here. You want to move from here to here, you will need some energy to do that. Otherwise, you won't even move, remember? What causes this energy to have to appear in the first place is uh, the battery. So yeah, make sure you know the difference between these two. There are some practice questions down there you can try out to uh, kind of think about the difference between them. Now there is this very, very, very cute animation. This video I will say is a must watch. Because what it does, it, it has beautiful music, it's very visual, and I will say it will definitely help you in visualizing this whole electricity thing and what is going on. So I'll just give you a sneak peek. It's nine minutes long, but it's totally worth your time. Totally, totally worth your time. So here we have the, you see all the things moving around, very cute. Okay, so what's happening, this force here on the left is really your EMF, electromotive force. 
what it does is it gives all the charges some potential energy so they ooh, they're kind of higher up here visualized and then once they are going through the wire so they all have the same potential okay no change but once they come to a component like a light bulb here then they drop what does the drop mean the drop represents the voltage drop potential drop they lose energy because they've already given the energy to the light bulb then of course they give everything and then they are down there all then they go back to the uh, to the battery. They return empty-handed. <sighs> so anyway, that's the one. You must watch through the whole thing by the end of this video. Please do. It's a great one. But yeah, let me just summarize a little bit here. So this is our EMF. This is our voltage drop. I should add the word drop. Or aka potential difference. There's a difference there. Now, if, if you have a EMF, a battery of 3 volts, Means over here, you see the same height, right? It will drop the whole 3 volts. Drop. That's what it means. So that's what we call potential difference. Now, what are these volts, volts thing? Volts is a unit, right? But you also need to be able to define this unit. So the volt is related to everything we've looked at just now, okay? Based on this work done is QV kind of stuff. So your volt is related to energy per charge. That's the idea. So yeah, one joule energy per unit coulomb means one coulomb. That is one volt. That's how they define it. And of course, using the same definition as potential difference between two points, when one joule energy converted, when one coulomb passed. That's the idea of this one. So sometimes they'll ask you in mark scheme, what is a volt? Basically use the same idea of this one, putting together the potential difference idea. Now I want to point out to you, right? So down here you see got a difference. Why? Because here they have a voltage drop. And you can see that because here got a lot of energy, the yellow stuff, then here no more already or give to the light bulb already. So here if you take a voltmeter, voltmeter has to measure across two points. That's what the two points mean. One point here, one point there. It's just like you touch only. It's not part of the circuit. There's no charges flowing through it. Here you will measure a potential drop. For example, if your battery 9 volt, then here, okay, I'll drop 9 volts. This is your volt meter reading. But, 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 you look at this picture on the right, right? Do you think there will be a volt meter reading? What would be the volt meter reading? Think about it. Is there a change in energy? Ah? Volt, or I should say potential difference, is a work done or change in energy... Per charge, so each charge. If you look at this carefully, they all still have their yellow stuff. They still have the energy. They have not passed a component yet. So all along a wire, if you didn't pass any component, then there is no voltage drop. There is no potential difference between this point and this point. So here will be zero. Okay, I think carefully. Yeah. So if I extend that to a, a circuit form, if I put a resistor here, then I go and take voltmeter and I measure between here and here. There will be no potential difference. Your voltmeter reading will show zero. But if I measure between, let's say here and here, oh, the charges have lost energy. So they will have a reading. So maybe like six volts if this EMF supply is six volts. So yeah, or there will be a change in energy here because... The register get hot la energy and all things like that. Okay, so make sure you know these two ideas correct. Now here is the end of the theory section. Now let's look through some of the past year examples to help us practice this idea of voltage, PD, and EMF. All right, here's the one note. Uh, I should also give you a heads up. <laughs> if you haven't um, written stuff here, save this space. If you already written stuff in your handout, never mind, it's okay. Uh, I'm going to save this for the next part when we draw more circuits. But yeah, this part is where you can write down the definition that we looked at earlier. Anyway, so I'm going to scroll down to find the question first. Ah, there it is. The first question of the day is on page 17. If you have the handout. This one, no calculation involved yet. Let's see what they want us to do. So here we have a basic circuit, two resistors. There's a few ways to draw resistors, by the way. 
uh, you can do a squiggly line or a box like that. Anyway, we have two resistors connected to a cell. 2 ohm, 4 ohm. Good to know. Which graph shows the, how the potential varies between x and y? So x is this point here, y is over here. How does potential vary? Hmm. You want to think about this thing. Whenever you go across a component, you lose energy. And because you lose energy, um, there is what we call a voltage drop. Like what we looked at just now, you know, all the thing drop down, point. Voltage drop. And that is what we call the potential difference, la, aka potential difference. So let's see, if you start off with here, if your battery has some very high potential, you'll be V here, V, 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 V. Once you come to here, it will start to decrease because you will measure a potential difference here. So, mm, does not look right that A, A, A and B is not correct. Decreasing, decreasing, okay, yeah. So, when you go across the first resistor, you will drop. Okay, so drop a bit, drop a bit. Okay, C and D is okay. Then when you go to this part, oh, yo, so thick. When you go to the, in, the section in the middle, the wire here, this part, we have no potential drop. Because nothing, ma, it's just a wire. No loss of energy, no change in energy. So then there's flat. Okay, so yeah, both are so correct. Then you come to here again. Oh, so you have another drop here. Another potential difference. You measure, you have drop even lower. So drop, 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 drop. How do you decide whether it's C or D? They pretty much look the same. Hmm. Do you spot the difference between the two graphs? It's kind of like related to their gradient. So, if you look at the resistance here, 2 ohms and 4 ohms, which one do you think will have a bigger drop? Oh, this one, smaller resistance. So, you have a smaller potential difference or smaller drop. Because it need less, it will use up less energy, ma. This one is a bigger resistance. So, if you measure across it, you measure across the PD here, it will be a bigger drop. So, look at this one. This one is a big drop. Then a small drop. Hmm, not quite right. Nope. I bet it's D. D, you start off with a small drop because of only 2 ohm resistance. And then a bigger resistance, so a bigger drop. So yeah, that's how you can think of it. Just remember, as you go around, potential is dropping. And because it's dropping, you will have a potential difference if you measure across, let's say, here and here. That's the PD. Alright, that's the first one. Oh, and before I go to the, the, the next question, I need to mention there's a typo here. This should not be MJ13P11. This should be ON13P11. So make a little correction, inform your friends. Yep. Next one is on page 48. This one might look a little familiar. You're like, Miss, I've seen this before. Isn't this, isn't the equation for this? Now forget the equation. We're going to look at potential drops here. Here you have a battery of electro, electromotive force, 9 volts, and negligible internal resistance. Now this is important. Negligible internal resist resistance. We'll see what that means in a bit. But basically, your battery has 9 volts. It's supplying 9 volts to the circuit. So this one, the EMF is same as your the potential supplied to the whole circuit. Okay, so 9 volts. Then two resistors, we don't know one of it. And then, there is an output potential difference. What is this? This is basically saying like, well, what if you connected a voltmeter here and here? You will read 4 volts. That's what I mean. Okay, so there's a potential drop of 4 volts. Potential or voltage drop, aka potential difference. 4 volts. What is the resistance of R? You know, scratch your head a bit. How to find R? Uh? Well, here's some facts that we need to dissect here first. Here you start off with 9 volts. 
you kind of like go up the waterfall. Then, because of this first resistor, you're going to have a drop already. I don't know why it is. Lah. Then, after that, it will drop again because of this resistor. And we know that one is 4 volts drop. Okay, so if here already drop 4 volts, means this one must drop 5 volts. Oh. If not, where your volts come from? The total add up must equal to your whatever is supplied from your battery. So 5 volts, 4 volts. Okay, now what about the resistance? Here's the trick. We want to think about ratios. This one dropped 5 volts, 160. This one dropped lesser a bit, means this resistance has to be lesser. Lor. But how much lesser? There are a few ways to do it, but here's one of them. When you think of ratios, the ratio of this section over this section, the drop will be 5 volts over 4 volts. right? That is the same ratio as this resistance over R. So 160 ohm over who knows what ohm. Okay, these are ratios. Ah. Bigger, bigger resistance means bigger drop. Smaller resistance, smaller drop. Okay, so let's find R. We calculate R, you should get about 128 ohms. Oh, is it this answer? There's one way to check. The other way is also a ratio method. This is to check. Ah. Check. If this 4 volt out of the whole 9 volts is this ratio. Okay, this is the total. Uh, total. This is for that section only. Uh. That means this resistance, which was we found 1, 2, 8, should be the same ratio out of the total resistance of all the resistors. So uh, 160 plus 1, 2, 8. So this is our total V. This one is our total resistance. Check and see, correct or not, the ratio? So I'm going to check 128 over 160 plus 128. 4 over 9, 4 over 9. Okay, correct. Okay, so the ratios can be between both sections. Either from this section, uh, sorry, this section and this section, you compare the ratio. Or you compare the ratio of one section over the whole thing. Also can work. After all, they're all ratios. Let's look at another one, a little bit more interesting, but similar in this idea. Now, this one is on page 42, coming from an exam ON17, paper 1, variant 2. All right. Now, if you're adventurous, pause the video, try this out and see how you can figure it. It's similar, but with a twist. Okay, so try it out, see if you can play around with some ideas and see how it works. Give yourself some time. Okay, so here we have potential dividers again. Why are they called potential dividers? Well, we'll figure that out. We'll see more of this in the later chapter as well. So anyway, we're connected to a 12 volt supply. So 12 volts is the whole difference between this side and this side. You go one round, you drop, 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 drop and then you go back to the battery. Uh, negligible internal resistance, that's important too. Good to know, negligible. What range of voltage can be obtained between X and Y? Ha, huh? got range of voltage. Ah. First, you need to know, why this resistor got an arrow there? Oh, if it got an arrow there, means it's called a potentiometer, aka, I think the other names are like rheostat. But the name that is most... Uh, clear is is also called a variable resistor. So it's a resistor that the resistance can change on. Right? And you see, ma, change from 0 to 100. So what range of voltage can you find here? You only want this possible range. Well, let's say what if it is 0 ohms? Huh? 0 ohms? 0 ohms means pretty much it's just resistor. Pretty much you can just say it's a wire. Nothing there. Then you try to measure potential here. Huh? No potential. Lah. So here, if here is 0 ohm, this will be 0 volts. So no drop. So the smallest is 0. I all is 0. Okay, good to know. So that's the first part. And what if you have 100 ohms here? You increase, increase, increase until it becomes 100 ohms. How are you going to find this maximum 
the voltage. Hmm. Remember the ratios? We talked about the ratios. Well, one way to think about it is, well, this V over here, over the whole circuit's 12 volts, should be equal to this particular one, 100, over all the, the whole resistance here. So 100 plus 300. In other words, you can say this voltage over here will be 100 over 400 times 12. This is also based on the ratio idea that we looked at earlier. So we calculate this one properly. Oh yeah, what's my calculator? 100 over 400 times 2, 12. 3 volts. Okay, so maximum 3 volts. Let's do a reality check. How we know we're correct or not? Like. Well, if we say it's 3 volts here. Eh, where's my red colour? Reality check. If this is 3 volts, means this drop will have to be 12 minus 3. 9 volts. Let's see. Bigger drop, bigger resistance. Smaller drop, smaller resistance. Hmm. Correct, correct, correct. Can, can. Uh, we can also check with the other method that we looked at. Let's look at the ratio of this section to this section. So that's 9 volt over 3 volt. This resistance over this resistance, 300 ohm over 100 ohm. Check and see. Correct or not? 9 divided by 3 is 3. 300 divided by 100 is 3. The ratio is 3. So correct. That's how you can check and be sure. Two ways to solve the same thing. Alright? So that's potential drops in potential dividers. Now, all these past questions we've been looking at uh, are about components in series. Very much like this picture of bulbs here. We have three bulbs in series and charges are flowing through all of them. There's only one road. Okay? So if I play this thing, you see that every time it goes past a component, it drops. Oh, sorry, my com computer's a bit laggy, so it's a bit blur. But every time it goes through a light bulb, for example, or a resistor, loses energy, voltage drop. Then voltage drop and voltage drop. And by the time it passes all the components and go back to the battery, it is at zero potential already. Okay? Then it goes through the battery and then, you know, you have a bunch of uh, EMF giving you energy and then they're up again and they go down and they round and round and round until eventually your battery runs out of chemical energy. Okay? So this is another part of the must watch video. Please go and watch it to better understand that. Now what if uh, it's a little bit different. How would we change this picture? How would this change if, say, it's a circuit in parallel? How would it look like? Let me find out that section for you in this video. This is how it would look like if you had stuff in parallel. Very pretty, I like it. Remember what parallel is? We just looked at that at current. So previous in a previous bonus observation video, we say, oh, the current will split up. Okay, so it go up from the battery, Split here, some go here, some go there. Yeah, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. But notice how the voltage is like across each of the parts. Here, no matter which branch you are choosing, the voltage drop is the same. Voltage drop, voltage drop, voltage drop. Same as the battery. Okay, So when you have parallel routes, the voltage drop across all these three parallel routes will be the same. And we're going to use this idea to solve one last question. Over here in page 73. I think that's here. Let me tr throw this out of the way. And boop. Alright, here it is. So this is on page 73, 0116P21. We're going to look at one example. What if there's stuff in parallel? What does that mean? Voltage drop is the same. This one, give yourself... How many, how many marks is this? I do until... We'll do until section B only. We'll skip C. Okay, so we'll go until here. That is how many marks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So give yourself about at most nine minutes to solve this first. Try to see what you can do. You can remember try to remember how to do these circuit things. And then come back and we'll go through this together. So pause the video, go try it out first. Nine minutes. Alrighty, hopefully you grab a piece of pencil to try it out. Owen 16 p 21 As usual, structure questions. Gonna start with a little definition thingy. So you gotta remember, oh, 
what was potential difference again? We just looked at this earlier. Simple terms, you can say it is work done. I'm going to write a shortcut. Lah. Work done per unit charge. Or you can say it is the change or energy transform. Change in energy is energy transform. Ah. Energy transform or converted. And you might want to say from what to what per unit charge. Okay, so this is the main idea based on this thing. Work done is Q, V, and work done is also change in energy. So now if you want to define potential difference, that is just work done over uh, charge or change in energy over charge. And that's both of these options. Now I put a bracket here because it would be good to also mention energy transform from what to what. So you say from electrical energy to other energy. This is the part I mentioned, right? This is the difference between EMF. EMF is chemical to electrical. Potential difference is electrical to other. Okay, so make sure you know how to talk about these ones. Uh, this is a B1 mark, independent mark, if you got the idea of energy per unit charge. This part is optional, but please write it down just in case any mark scheme makes it required. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we come to this circuit. Now, what makes this different than the ones we've looked at before is that now there's two uh, resistors in parallel. How do we solve that now? Okay, let's stay calm and go through it. We have EMF of 14, negligible internal resistance. That's important. Means 14 volt EMF means 14 volt is your battery potential difference from here to here. Okay, good to know. Like, you know, just now we look at the video, all the Charges going up, they're going up by 14 volts. Okay, then now where is current flowing? Oh, right, this way. So let's go down this way to see what's happening. We have passed by one resistor, and then there's two. Oh, we got to remember a bit of the resistor parallel and series kind of rules already. R3 is a variable resistor, means it can change. Okay, you can adjust whether what resistance you want, variable resistor. The first thing they ask is, switch S is closed. Well, closed means you're turning on the circuit. So this switch here, you close it. Tuck. Press down the thing, so close it here. Calculate the current in the battery when the resistance is set at zero. R3 is zero. Where is R3? This one is zero. Hmm. When the resistance is zero, that's basically saying no resistance. So, if I redraw the circuit, it's going to look something like this. I have 14 volts. Come down to R1. Then, remember we looked at the observations in current. Yes, you can have R2 there, but since the resistance is 0, it's just going to go through there and then go back. Because 0 ohm is just like a wire only. So, oh yes, although there is a resistor there, resistor there the current is going to go zoop down here, down, and peace out, go back home. So basically, we're only looking at a circuit with one resistor. Ta -da! And they ask you what's the current. Here, it's also good to remember one of what we call Ohm's Law. Good refresher. We'll look at more at Ohm's Law later in another video, don't worry. But Ohm's Law will tell you how to find the relationship between potential difference, the current, and a resistance. So here, if we want to find the current in the battery, ooh, let's see. Well, if we have potential of 14 here, it means there will be a potential drop of 14 over here. Did I write 1 volt? 14. And there will be a current flowing through it, which is I. So for that particular resistor, um, all you need to do is, well, we have 14. I'm trying to find I, and the resistance is? What's the resistance? 6 ohms, that's right. So, if you get I, that will be about 2.3333333. I'm not going to write everything, so is there an answer space down there? Oh, yes, there is. So, in the answer space, mm, I can, I'll choose 2SF because here is 2SF, 2SF, so I'll do 2SF. Only in the answer space. But I'll keep my, all my values here because I want to use this later again. So, here... Two marks only. One comes from your knowledge of V equals the IR. You know this fact, this Ohm's law thingy. And then the other one comes from 
the final answer. So A1 and C1. That's the first one. Okay, remember, uh, here is a short circuit. Uh. This is 0 ohms. The resistor basically just vanished and it became a wire. Now, the next part will require you to think a little bit more carefully about resistors and resistance. Calculate the current when the resistance is set at 24 ohms. Ooh. So if I redraw this circuit down here, why not, since it's out of sight, I have my 14 volts, my first resistor, second resistor in parallel with another one, and they join together and then they go back. So we do know that the resistance of this one is 12 ohms, and this is 24 ohms, and this one is 6 ohms. Well, now we're trying to find what is the circuit current, or current in the battery. So it means this one, this I. What is the current? Now you may think, miss, can we think of the current come here, then split up and down, and then... Yes, you can think of that, but... We don't have exactly the skills to calculate how the current will split once it goes to that junction. But here's a shortcut to think about this. What if we can think about potential drops? Could we do that here? So what do I mean potential drop is this. If I measure the potential difference for this first section, Okay, it'll be some potential difference. If I measure the potential difference for this second section, I'll use the green color, either from this part, or if I join to the top part, either one, lah, it will all be the same potential difference. Because these two are in parallel, so they will drop at the same potential difference. Hmm, why can we do that? Leh? Ah, because, we'll see why in a bit. Let's find the total resistance and think about this potential thingy. I can simplify this to a circuit that looks like this. 6 ohms and then I combine the two in parallel. How to combine stuff in parallel? Uh, to find the R, right? This one. I will need to find, remember this equation? 1 over 12 plus 1 over 24. So R here will be, that's how you can combine those two parallel ones to become one vert, like one resistor, la, one effective resistance. So 1 over 12 plus 1 over 24 is 1 over 8, and so that is 8 ohms. So that these two just basically became an 8 ohm resistor combined together. Ah, now it's like your good old ones that you look at already, your series circuits. And the potential drop here is still the same as what we said before, so whatever V this lah. Okay, so no matter how many you, how many uh, parallel resistors you have there, both have the same potential drop on each end, across each of those resistors, because they're in parallel. So now, okay lor, so you can calculate your current, maybe lor, current, do your same thing, V equals to IR. So the voltage or potential drop across the whole thing is still our same 14 volts, which is from here across the battery or here across all the resistors either one works so we have 14 equals to what currents we don't know now r here is the total resistance so now we are in series we can add them together so 6 plus 8 some people may choose to put this part inside there can also la. but i do break it down into two steps so we have 14 divided by oh, 14 divided by 14 that's just one so yes, the answer is 1 amp of current flowing through the battery. Okay, here is 1 amp. Once it comes to the junction, it will split. One will be a little less, one will be a little more, and then they'll recombine here to be 1 amp again. Here, one C1 mark comes from you knowing how to combine, uh, how to deal with this part of parallel resistors here. How do you deal with it? That's, come, that's where the first C1 mark is. Then the last, C1 mark, uh, last accuracy mark comes from the final answer, A1, here. So, 1 lor. I uh, put 1.0 lor, okay lor, 1.0. <laughs> so this is how to deal with parallel ones. Remember, potential drop across them is the same. Also, you can just combine their resistances to, to simplify your circuit a bit. Now the last part up here, 
may be wondering, Miss, you didn't talk about this one yet, right? Kind of? Well, you have learned how to deal with this before, but not in detail. So let's see what they want. They say use your answers. Oh, means you have to use your answer from the previous part. The change in total power produced by the battery when the resistance of R is changed from 0 to 24. Mm -hmm. So we have the whole thing. <laughs> Redrawing this for the third time. Circuit, resistor, resistor, join together, go back. Okay. We're looking at the power produced by this fella here, this green color fella. How do you find power again? How is power related to electricity? Can you think of a formula for that from chapter 6? P equals to... P equals to IV. You're like, oh right, we have the P equals to IV thingy. Power equals to current flowing times the potential difference. Mm. But here we want change in power, right? So okay, now we'll change. What is changing? Ah? Oh, when this one is 0 to 24 ohm when it's changing. So we can find that. Okay, we need to find the change in current. So from previous, when it was at 0 ohm, the current was, what ah? 2.3. And then when this green color resistor or potential meter was at 24 ohms, we found a current of 1. This is from the previous question. We found this already. There you go, I draw a box. So if you want to find the change in power because of this change in uh, uh, resistance and current, what is the change in power? Then we see, oh, change in current is 2.33333. Okay, la, put one more. Minus 1 amp times, what's the potential difference? Oh, do we know the potential difference? Hmm, look back at the circuit and see. Now, read the question very carefully. We want the power produced by the battery. Power. So you're looking at the current through the power, the change in current. And also, what is the V of this battery? Check and see, check and see. 14 volts. Oh, yo, 14 volts. Write down, 14 volts. So that is the V that you want to use here. Now, I notice there's a lot of V already, so you're kind of confused where, which V to use. 14 volts. So... If I multiply everything together, the power or change in power because of a changing current is that much watts. This is, by the way, because of a change current. So there will be a different power law power when you set it at one setting, power when you set it at another setting. Um, this one I can run up to 2SF because, you know, 2SF, 2SF. So I'll choose 2SF. So this will be about 19 watts for here. Uh, the mark scheme, by the way, also accepts 18 watts. 1.8. 18 watts if you use 2.3 amps instead of 2.3333 like me. Okay, I did 2.333. So the first C1 marks come from P equal IV. That's for knowledge of the equation that power is related to that. And then, of course, your final answer will be uh, 19 or 18 depending on what you use in your calculations. Okay, so we're uh, like, whoa, it's starting to get more interesting, more strange stuff happening. We will have another next video just on power. So hang in there if you like, you need a refresher. But the main idea is, think about stuff in series, stuff in parallel, what does potential drop mean, and all those kind of stuff. Before I wrap up the video, I just want to give you a very, very quick heads up on this uh, challenge question. I consider it, well, it's not hard, hard, but it requires you to think about real-life situations, which you might have to do in your home or someday, you know. Hi, how would I know? Because um, what makes it challenging is terminology. So here we have a circuit. Something goes through a fuse, through a switch, through a heater, maybe for you to shower or whatever. If you have a 110 DC supply. Wow. That is connected to the house system already. Connected. Okay. Owing to a fault, fault basically means something spoiled already. Power is not supplied to the heater. So somehow the heater not working. A technician diagnosed the fault using a voltmeter, a good old voltmeter, so using a potential difference. He closed the switch, so close, 
and connect his meter between where? The positive terminal. So he connect between here and the fuse terminal F2. Okay, so it's voltmeter measuring potential difference between there. Okay, I'll leave, I'll leave you to find the answer. I encourage you to brainstorm with your friends on how and why the thing. This is what I want to tell you about what is a fuse. Now, a fuse is a safety feature in every electrical appliance. For example, uh, this plug head. Can you see this thing? Yeah, kind of like that. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty pleased say you have seen these plug heads before. Three pin plug head for your kettle, for your laptop, computer, anything. La. See the three pin, right? You can see. Yeah, three pin, three pin. Kind of glitching out a bit. Oh well. Anyway, so what happens to this three pin plug head is if you open it up inside, actually, give me a second, I'm going to open this thing up. There we go. So once you open it up, you would see a little fuse inside there. This thing here is what we call the fuse. Okay, you can actually take out that tiny little thing. And ugh, what this fuse, like I said earlier, is a safety feature because if somehow there's a huge current going through your plug from your house for whatever reason and it goes into your your phone or computer at least it won't fry because this fuse will break to save your circuit it's like sacrificing itself lah okay uh, can you see the number there let's see there's a number here there 13a that means 13 amps after 13 amps this thing will break and then it'll just be a dead end it's kind of like cutting the wire for you lah effectively okay so in this case if your fuse is working, it will be like what you see in the picture here. It's basically like a line, just a normal wire, usually no resistance. This is if it's working. If your fuse has melted, means my little, where's my little fuse? If the little fuse has melted, then it would break up, kind of like something like this, I suppose. It's like a wire has broken inside, which means... If it's working, and I put potential difference here, there should be no potential difference because it's, like we look at earlier, Ma, if it's just a wire, no potential drop. But if it's broken, and then I measure a potential difference here, uh-oh, there will be a potential difference because one side will be 110 volt and the other side will be zero. So there'll be a difference in the law. Okay, so use that to try and deduce which you think is the answer for this Interesting application question. Now, let's close up this video. So hopefully by now you have a better understanding of what we are learning here. Hopefully you can explain all these stuff. What's potential difference, volt, EMF, PD, voltage drop. What does all these really mean? Because from here on, all these things will... You will see a lot of equations to calculate these things. A lot of different ways. But make sure you know... You, can, you, are, you are able to visualize it. Like once again, I remind you, please... Go and watch this thing. Must watch uh, the animation that I just talked about. It'll be nine minutes of your life that you will not regret. Well, I mean, you, if you are paying attention, you would understand your circuits a lot much better after watching this video. So that's all for PD and EMF. Next up, we're going to look at real-life circuits with real batteries. And we're going to find out an extra thing called internal resistance that happens in real-life circuits. Okay, so that's all for this one. I'll see you in the next video.